there has been new reporting uh, and it's obviously a story that's very important to me that I've, that's been ongoing. And I talked about some of this a couple of weeks ago, but basically just even further reporting on the FBI role in something called Lava Jato. And I'll just reset this really quickly. Lava Jato was an independent task force in Brazil that was tasked with uh, uncovering corruption in state uh, oil enterprise and Petrobras and also in a big uh, major construction company as well. And, and it turned into a political operation which targeted the Workers' Party government and the left in Brazil. It culminated in making the former president, Lula da Silva, a political prisoner and paved the way because he was leading J.R. Bolsonaro in the polls of Bolsonaro becoming president. And first, every you know everybody was wrong on this because they didn't look at things critically. They believed top line propaganda. Uh, you know, don't believe the top line of anything. Dig in. Uh, there was a systemic demonization campaign that people bought into. Uh, a lot of people bought into uh, not the base of the Workers' Party and not forces like the Landless Workers Movement. So there's a lesson there. But then even as the case has, you know, it's been more and more clear what was really happening. And there was revelations of uh the political motivations of the prosecutors, there's still been some ambiguity about the U.S. role in this. And new reporting has shown actually direct relationship between FBI agents um, and the prosecution team, as well as actually direct financial incentives in the prosecution team. So in other words, uh, Dalignal, who was the chief uh, prosecutor for the Lava Jato team, cut a deal with the uh, Justice Department, where he was actually getting cuts of monetary rewards um, of fines leveled at companies like Petrobras. So while he's doing this political operation and actually, of course, costing thousands of jobs, he's in addition to politically benefiting, they're actually personal financial stakes. Um, And this broader discourse around corruption is something I want people to really pay attention to. It's been weaponized against the left, and it's been leveraged by all of these modern right-wing forces, Donald Trump, Bolsonaro, Modi. There was all this kind of generic anti-corruption rhetoric around all of them. And here's a clip of Brian Mayer on Telesaur explaining this concept of lawfare and Lava Jato, and he's on with Camila Escalante. Yesterday would have marked eight months since the coup against the Bolivian people and their president of the plurinational state of Bolivia, Evo Morales. It's worth recalling that it was under the pretext of corruption and through systematic lawfare that in April 2016, Dilma Rousseff, president of Brazil, was ousted in a coup and in similar fashion, they conspired against Lula to prevent him from being democratically elected into the presidency. So how is it that corruption has served to take out the leaders of the left, but Bolsonaro's people have remained, relatively speaking, unscathed? Well, it's obvious, Camila, that these corruption charges are, are weaponized and politicized. You know, this, this U.S.-backed operation, Lava Jato, was used even as a kind of Trojan horse to go after other left Latin American leaders in other countries through this corruption case involving Odebrecht Construction Company, which is worth remembering, is one of the biggest competitors of the American companies Halliburton and Bechtel, you know, which get all of these contracts in Africa and in other countries in Latin America. So in a way, by going after Odebrecht, the U.S. government was helping take out competition for its own engineering companies. You know, so, so we see that Corruption, anti-corruption is just a kind of facade. It's a, it's, a, it's a technique to go after enemies. And that's what lawfare is. It's using the law to annihilate a political enemy. And in this case, corruption has become the rallying cry for these U.S.-backed lawfare attacks against left leaders all over Latin America. You know, I mean, you see the latest thing with Evo Morales. Now they're trying to say he's a terrorist or something. Uh, They they went after Michelle Bachelet in Chile, Christina Kirchner, leaders all over Latin America with this. Sorry. Well, yes, I mean, Brian's exactly right. And that is how it's uh, impacted, particularly the reversal of the pink tide in Latin America, which starts really in, I mean, there was always efforts at coups. I mean, there was a 2002 coup against Chavez in Venezuela, but in 2008, 2009, with the incoming Obama administration, Hillary Clinton backed 
a coup against Manuel Zelaya in Honduras. And that signaled um, a very aggressive pushback. And, and of course, uh, you know, to this day, the Trump administration is just absolutely belligerent and constantly attempting coups in Venezuela uh, uh, as well. Mm. So talk about structural forces, not corruption. Um, that's an important frame. And talk about it in context, too. That's right. If someone says, are you against corruption? You'd be like, yeah, corruption's bad. Um, but you got to look at who's asking that question. 